Subramaniam Swami, BJP leader, TSR Subramaniam, former cabinet secretary, Gaurav Bhatia of the Samajwadi Party. Kumar Ketkar with me in the studio, senior journalist. My first question is to Renuka Chaudhary. First of all, Ms. Chaudhary, it's good to see you after some time on the news hour tonight. Now, you know, that we'll keep this simple and we won't make it complicated. The simple question everyone wants to know. Who is the competent authority? The CBI's FIR thrice refers to the competent authority. I think India needs this mystery ended now. Who is this competent authority? Ask the CBI. Why are you asking me? Who do you think is the competent authority? That doesn't matter. We are discussing what the CBI has said. So let the CBI spell out who they deem as competent authority. Can I in the meantime speculate? Well, it's tax free. Go ahead and speculate. <laughs> I won't speculate only, but I'll try and connect the dots if we open up the debate. If I consider the process of application for a coal block as mentioned in the website of the coal ministry, I find here that it is written, after receipt of recommendations of the administrative ministry slash the state government concerned, the screening committee would consider the applications and make its recommendations. Based on the recommendations of the screening committee, the ministry of coal will determine the allotment. Be that the case, Kumar Ketkar, it was then the Ministry of Coal that decided against Hindalko's application and later the same Ministry of Coal or the PMO that overturned the same decision. So, is the competent authority the Prime Minister? Obviously, the competent authority is the Prime Minister or the PMO and PMO would not recommend it to Prime Minister himself before signing. So, obviously, the competent authority, whether CBI names it or not, is the Prime Minister's office and the Prime Minister himself. I don't know whether CBI should put the name, that is their business. But as far as you and me can common sense understands, it is PMO or the Prime Minister himself who is the competent authority. Who, is the who, has, who has been considered as if, as if he is a Mr. No, X. No, you see, the, the fact is that who is the competent authority? That Mr. If, X if, has to be Prime Minister. No, there is no. So we have that Mr. X has to be the Prime Minister. TSR Subramaniam, who is the competent authority? Uh, Arnab, usually acts don't speak about competent authority. It's usually the rules which speak about it. In the absence of rules, these are internal procedures. Uh, I, I guess that past practice indicates that the coal minister is the competent authority. Uh, I think the buck stops there. And uh, in this particular case, perhaps during that time, the prime minister also acted as, uh, as coal minister. But he was not competent authority in his capacity as prime minister. He was probably competent authority in his capacity as coal minister. Correct. As a coal minister. No, no. Well, you see, this is, this is now getting very interesting. So let's get in <coughs> Subramaniam. So, uh, let's get in Subramaniam Swami as well into the debate. You know, I find here that the CBI FIR itself states that the formation of the joint venture was approved also by the competent authority. Now the mystery is getting more and more mysterious. If all the decisions were signed off by the coal ministry, are we trying to say that only Parekh was the competent authority? That Parekh was a rogue coal secretary who completely bypassed the minister despite knowing that the minister is also the prime minister. Well, according to my information, and this is contained in a letter I have written to the CBI some time ago, the uh, decision was taken by an ad hoc committee of four persons in the, uh, located in the PMO. And uh, those four persons I have named in the letter. And uh, the CBI ought to uh, come out uh, and say who, uh, who the competent authority is. Obviously, there was a, also a a super competent authority whose, uh, whose name also I mentioned. And uh, the reason why the CBI is acting coy is because they can't name these four people. Gaurav Bhatia, who's the competent authority who Arnab, did, did uh, the I same, by the way, did the same, did, did the, right what's now. it, second, did, did the same competent authority also give your leader the clean shit in the disproportionate assets case? Or was it some other competent authority? <laughs> Arnab, I would just request you, I would just request you to leave that uh, aside for the time being because you've asked me to discuss this topic and therefore I'll confine myself to this topic. I would just say that for a moment, let us forget that, you know, the PM was not heading and he was just the coal minister. 
if he was just the coal minister and these coal allocations would have been made then i am sure that the coal minister would have been asked to resign and he would have been the main person approving and the secretary comes under the coal minister therefore you know the buck stops there now since he is also the prime minister therefore the cbi is credibility and there is a big question mark on the fairness of the investigation being taken by the cbi do they have the courage to conduct a fair and impartial investigation do they have the courage what are you suggesting to name the let's talk minister. straight tonight let's not go around in circles these, on the news hour these If you're are suggesting something you can say it no i am i am i am i am clearly saying this that yes every person is equal before law and in this case if it is the prime minister of the country who was heading the coal ministry at that time then the cbi also needs to look into the role and the decision making process that has under has been undertaken secondly it is very important that the prime minister comes forward and all these questions that are being raised should be answered by him these are tough questions but then he needs to answer this renuka choudhury so the nation is clear about the role of the pmo and also these serious allegations that are being raised by many people no renuka choudhury you know almost four people on the panel including kumar ketkar believe that the competent authority is the prime minister now it had been reported renuka choudhury as i want you to respond to all of them that the fir no, initially no 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 i never said prime minister i said a committee ad hoc committee of four persons in the pmo yeah i know but you see the the thing is subramaniam swami do you know you'll get upset with me but are you for some strange reason you are always soft to the prime minister because you want the target to be somewhere else i know where you're going your target is political my question is not that the question is tonight it has been reported renuka choudhury you need to respond to the cbi it's a cbi i so have written to the cbi and they have not contradicted me well you know the this fir initially made references to the prime minister it was reported but then it was said because of the cbi chief ranjit sinha's intervention the intervention the references appeared as competent authority and unknown public servants now renuka choudhury what is going on this is similar to what was reported on september 4th that the cbi superintendent of police k r chorasia an investigating officer in the coal case had said in the progress report that it was a requirement to examine the prime minister among a list of pending actions in the case is then an attempt to distance the prime minister from the colgate scam miss choudhury as a yes no i think you would be very disappointed if it didn't play out the way you wanted to because it makes good television news but the point of the fact the fact of the matter is number 1 the prime minister has made a very clear categoric statement in parliament why is it you don't remember and recall that yes i remember he one where he said that he takes responsibility for answer. whatever happened yes and so a, a due diligence has to be done and when everything uh, is uh, played out you will understand that there is nothing for him to answer or be afraid of but in the meantime it's great excitement to sit and speculate and contribute to this and uh, have a lot of television news Well, I, it's quite interesting I, 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 I mean, you can't not, not, no, no, not take cognizance no no i think i i i i not i would listen i would of what subramaniam swami has said yes and you don't want anything to divert or dilute or di distract from the main thrust of this evening's program that's not fair Mr. you Chaudhary. have to be able to talk now whoever the competent <laughs> authority you've heard kamal nath also say that there is no question of anyone being above law yes we are not afraid to answer yes. we will when the time comes in the meantime there's going to be no voluntary disclosure scheme because you have to get your facts right this is a very so i've got my facts wrong uh, you're saying that i've got my facts that wrong mean no i'm not saying your facts are wrong but they could turn out to be not exactly what you wish it would be ja mummy saudri despite it it being entirely possible today that the sun probably rose in the west which is why subramaniam swami and you are on the same side strangely tonight which i find an impossibility no, no, you know not. a rare occurrence we are no, no it is an impossibility <laughs> swami will bear me out 
I'm, uh, this is incredible. Subramaniam Swami and Renuka Chaudhary are on the same side. No, so no. should I stop asking the questions? <laughs> Ah, wow. And what are the questions? Uh, I have two questions. Come out of this? I have two questions. And <laughs> there I are other panelists as well. <laughs> no, no, Gaurav Bhatia, you are also with the Congress. You know, I don't know. We say, I don't know. Your, your relationship with the Congress keeps changing depending on, you know, who you no, want to fight the election. I, I think that, that statement <clears throat> is not correct. I, I think I, that's why I made it very clear that it is in the interest of the uh, Prime Minister himself that there are serious allegations being made. It is time <clears throat> that he answers these tough questions and the nation knows what the truth is. And there is this habit, Arnab, if you recollect last time also when there was this affidavit controversy, when the law minister had summoned the CBI officials at his office and he tried to wet it, the Congress was buying time. Now, again, this time the same thing is happening. Every, uh, the, I, I think the Congress government should know who the competent authority is and they should take a firm stand, whether it is I, the uh, uh, Prime Minister <coughs> or is it somebody else? Why don't they take a stand? Why do they need time for confused. this? You, all of you are confused. No, I am worried as a citizen, Renuka Ji. Nothing else. I think it, it, is, it is a very worrying fact. When Hello. serious allegations are made, Hello. the Prime Minister citizen. should be above these allegations. And if there is nothing to hide, then the nation should know about it. Why should I not be worried? No, no, excuse me. No, no, what is there for you to be worried? There is a complete legal procedure that's in place. This is being monitored by the Supreme Court. Unless, of, of course, course not. Chief Justice <coughs> Arnav Goswami would like to... Yeah, Renuka Chaudhary. <laughs> Renuka Chaudhary. One minute, please. No, no, one second. One second. One second. One second. One, I, I, I genuinely no, believe. And, and, and I genuinely right believe. Parliamentary I, genu I genuinely believe <coughs> that I must be doing something right that three politicians on the panel have a problem with what I'm asking. But I will ask just two questions and answer no, my questions no here today. Now, one second. Please, no please, uh, let me let me get specific. I think we should go deeper. I think we should get specific. The entire, the, politicians? the entire argument, Renuka Chaudhary, let's, let's get a straight answer from you on this one. The entire argument has been, we did what the screening committee wanted us to do, right? Kumar Ketkar? Yeah. That's been the argument of the government? That's been the argument. They've said screening committee did it, we yeah. only followed the screening committee, right? Yeah, but they don't only follow the screening committee. Finally, Prime Minister will take a decision ah. on the basis of the advice of the screening committee <coughs> and also on the advice of the rest of the bureaucracy. So, the, so oh, the, I don't think so competent the, authority so is the, in question. Everybody so the, knows so Prime Minister himself has said no, in no, no, no. that he is he is <coughs> taking full responsibility. The, the, the question, so, competent authority, everybody knows. One second. Here is not a question of whether the Prime Minister has said so. My question is, if the recommendation of the screening committee, Renuka Chaudhary, let's be specific, are not binding, then is the allotment process even more discretionary? What happens to the screening committee proposals? And if the decision of the screening committee is to be junked, right, then isn't that the decision of the coal ministry, which in this case was headed by the prime minister himself? What is the logic here? You are junking the entire process of the screening logic. committee. You are adding a great level of discretion. And all we want to know is who brought in that element of discretion? Who? Beyond the screening committee, who? Now, if you understand the act of governance, and if you understand the veracity of time and timely interventions which are to be made by different authorities at difficult times in order to promote or change when there is no policy in position there. I don't. And when things happen in retrospective effect, you no. are questioning something in a different era, at a different time, when different things prevail. Miss, Miss Chaudhary. Now, it's very easy to come on to <coughs> camera and say black and white, yes or no. Miss Chaudhary, it's like you can, asking, you, have you beaten if you, your wife if you find, If you find if any factual inaccuracy, like then I'd like to remind you, let's get TSR Subramaniam in. Because I'd like to remind not you before I go to TSR okay. Subramaniam that there is a, there is a, all I'm doing, all I'm doing, I'm holding. talking about governance, which is an evolving, ongoing you, you process see, yes, at different yes, times, yes. different <coughs> situations okay. develop and you need to take decisions. Right. So the question is, and so in this, you're damned if in, you do and damned no, if you not, don't. No, it's not. It's not. Miss Chaudhary, consider the statement of the Prime Minister. Now, TSR Subramaniam will come next. This is the statement of the Prime Minister which comes out on the 27th of August 2012 at 7.15 p.m. Quote, any administrative allocation procedure involves some judgment. And in this case, the judgment was that of the many participants in the screening committee acting collectively. 
there were then no allegations of impropriety in the functioning of the committee. Now all we want to know is can the Prime Minister then explain why he felt it was necessary to overturn the considered judgment of the screening committee. The Ministry of Coal has been saying all along that the standing committee has been fair, transparent and just. If then all we want to know is why was the uh, recommendation now, overturned? If you are going to go by the book of rules... I am going by what the Prime Minister said. You will appreciate that I am not going to second guess the Prime Minister because this matter is sub judice and it is being monitored by the Supreme Court. And you will appreciate it's, the CBI is talking about it. And so hence, it is really not rule opposition for us to be debating this on national No, no, TV. But, 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 Ms. Chaudhary, I, I have with me, and, and, I have with uh, me a uh, copy, one second, I have with me a copy of the 20, 25th Screening Committee which gives in detail, and I'll point out here, exact recommendations which were made in the case of Indal and Hindalco. And I also have the copy of the 27th Screening Committee which approved the minutes of the 24th and 25th Screening Committee. In other words, there were three or four considered meetings of at least 10 or 15 top bureaucrats of the government of India who went through a process and made a particular decision. That decision was overturned later. So, so TSR Subramania, why was the decision overturned? Yes. Is all that we are, who took so, the decision? TSR Subramania wants to counter you. Yes, to TSR Subramania. Arnav, we have to make a distinction between field events like Muzaffar Nagar riots or, uh, or elsewhere. and. And, and the working secretariat. I think here I have not seen exactly the files on this particular area. <coughs> I think distribution of work was quite clear. PM doesn't come in the picture. The coal minister comes in the picture. PM Mo ought not to come in the picture. This is a matter as far as the coal minister is concerned, he has got a secretariat. That secretariat is headed by the secretary and that is supported by the screening committee. As I understand it, procedure is screening committee makes the recommendations on merit. Then the secretary processes it for approval of the competent authority, which is the coal minister, not the PM. If the PMO has intervened in it, it is improper and incorrect. But who is the coal minister? Normally, PM may have got anybody. Who is the no, coal minister? Everybody. Informally, he may have got. Oh, but who is the coal minister? Informally, PMO. Who is the coal minister? The, the coal minister at that time was the PM. So he was the PM. So what does and this mean then? If he says that he took responsibility, which is correct. It is his responsibility. He has to. The final, the buck stops with him. The question now really is. In the face of a very specific decision, recommendation by the screening committee, if it was overturned, normally the files would speak. We cannot speculate on this. We have got to see what were the circumstances, what were the new factors not taken into account. It would not have been stuck at a one line kind of an order. I, I think it is useful to find out and reading of the file will give a clear picture as to what are the thoughts all, of government all, in this area. All I am saying. And, <coughs> and, and it, is also, it is also extremely important if it was pointed out to the competent authority that the screening committee had taken a particular decision the it sought to be overturned. <coughs> if, you, if, if that recommendation has been made, it is full responsibility of the competent authority finally. Well, so that's exactly the point. We go back to who the competent authority was. And if that were the case, you see the screening committee's deliberations make it clear that A, Indalco did not have a fresh ca case for a fresh block of 200 megawatt capacity and secondly that uh, Hindalco need not be allo allotted a separate coal block. This was earlier the case. If that were the case, if that was the decision of the screening committee, then what can lead to it being overturned? I go back to Subramaniam Swami. And is there any malafide intent in the overturning of the breach of norms? How can the final authority and not the recommending authority not be examined? There are two authorities. There's a recommending authority, which is the coal secretary. There is a final <coughs> authority, and we don't know who that is. It's that we are only told it's a competent authority. How can the final authority well, not be examined? Well, well, first of all, First of all, uh, Mr. Anup Goswami, we are talking about the theoretical aspects of how a government should function or is, is expected to function. Yes. We know that this government doesn't function in the expected lines according to the rules. We have seen that in the ordinance. We have seen that in so many other things. If, uh, if the Prime Minister is anything, he's perhaps the most incompetent authority of this government. We is bypassed. And he has uh, not come out for, because last time he came out, the entire uh, party fell on him like a ton of bricks when he declared that the allocation of spectrum, the price of spectrum was fixed by Mr. Chidambaram in, uh, in, in a committee with the Raja. And he said it in Raja Sabha. And then there was a big uproar in the party and uh, the whole thing got buried. 
Now today, let me tell you that the signature is of the Minister of State for uh, Coal, Mr. Rao. It is his signature there. Mr. Nas uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Manmohan Singh's signature doesn't come anywhere. And I am saying it with full knowledge that the final overturning and allocation was done by an ad hoc committee and they got an approval from somebody else and not from the Prime no, Minister. Come on. The CBI has got his hands tied. It's not Renuka Chaudhary, it. Renuka Chaudhary, that reference to somebody else is pretty obvious. I don't know why you're not responding to Subramaniam Swami or trying to deflect the very f f specific point that he's making out here because your silence is revealing. He obviously is indicating that there is somebody else who holds greater influence over the coal minister, that is the prime minister himself. All right, so let the mystery deepen. Let's delve into it and see how exciting you can have an entire discussion on this again, on this development. So that's exactly what I'm warning you against, Ardav. These are preliminary things that have come out. When the time is right, you will hear from the competent authority Miss 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 Chaudhary, Miss Chaudhary, this is a very serious question. No, no, this is a very serious question about the functioning of the government. Now, I go deep into this. I find the chairman of the screening committee himself has said, himself has said, himself has said. Competent anchor for this show, but I don't think you are really understand. Miss Chaudhary, we have to. You see, the question is very simple here. The chairman of the screening committee himself has said for the proposed greenfield Adya Aluminium project, quote, compared to the other applicants who had set up their facilities. It was perhaps too early to ask for a block for a project which is planned to be set up in 2010. Now, the chairman of the screening committee is the coal secretary himself. So, why then did the coal secretary himself see merit in the approval of a coal block later? We are simply asking you what happened in between. And I'm sure you, 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 uh, you, you believe, Ms. Renuka Chaudhary, that we have a right to ask what happened in between. You cannot get away by saying this is an evolving process of government. Even an evolving process of government has to follow certain rules, doesn't it, Ms. Chaudhary? Or can it be completely arbitrary in its functioning? No, it can't be arbitrary in its functioning. Nobody has ever said that the government is arbitrary in functioning. I'm just saying, have a little patience and you're going to get all the answers and a lot of egg on the face. I think TSR so has just have to wait for a bit. I think TSR has answered very perfectly am, the procedure. Are he has answered man, the coming. procedure, the decision-making process. I, I he has answered and therefore miss, the miss, question miss, actually miss, rests miss, there. Miss, After miss, TSR answered the necessary the aspects fact. of decision making process. And even if fact. Mr. Rao has signed it, even if Mr. Rao has signed it, obviously he cannot sign it without Ardham the consent of the coal minister. I, right I, in I, 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 all I'm saying is, all that I'll say, all that we'll say is we have to respect the viewer's intelligence. You know, the viewer asking today, the viewer is simply asking one question. He is saying there was a decision taken earlier. So if there are so many viewers asking us, this is a decision that was taken earlier that it's too early to allot a block. Parak himself said that the U-turn was based on a representation after the screening committee's decision. Now, what we want to know is, what were the details of that representation? Who all put their signature on it? Subramaniam Swami says there are four people in the PMO who put their signature on it, and that's why it was moving, right? You don't think that's a relevant point. You don't think anyone needs to know who those people were who put their signature? Well, I, don't, I cannot believe no. something in invisible existence. I don't believe in the Central existence. Bureau of Investigation. Like the, Sadhu, Sadhu has the, the, the Central Bureau of Investigation, Mr. Kumar but Ketkar CBI has filed. Name. CBI can name. Do you yes. think the CBI has done a complete job so far? Have they or yeah, have they not? CBI should name the competent ha authority who is a coal minister. So do you think the CBI can keep it general as competent authority, almost pretending as if it doesn't know who the competent authority is? Yeah, CBI cannot keep it that way. It cannot keep cannot. it that way, right? So that's yeah. the point. Yes, Gaurav wanted to come back. Gaurav. Arnab. Yeah, Arnab, see, one thing is very evident. If you look at the earlier affidavit that was filed by the CBI in the Supreme Court, which was looked down upon because they was tinkering and tampering with the affidavit, original affidavit, and now again, you know, this term being used. They are trying to shield a person and he, that person is very powerful. And that is why I said that, you know, there is a big question mark on the credibility and the courage that the CBI can show in investigate this matter fairly. Now, it is very important to also understand that if a screening committee made a recommendation and there was a representation later, the correct methodology would have been to refer the matter back to the screening committee 
to also consider the contents of the representation and then the screening committee could have taken a fresh decision and that should have been forwarded. This but it didn't go to the screening followed. committee. Therefore, did it go, did it go to the screening committee again? It did go. And no, no. There, there is no fairness in the process. So did the, the, the screening committee, did it go yeah, back so to the... it should have gone. It didn't go, it right? It should have gone. It didn't go, right? Got the up. presentation did it go. might have highlighted new facts which should have been brought before the screening committee. But, but it's, a, it's a simple and logical thing. If a, if a screening committee has taken a decision and if there is a recommendation, it's only necessary the recommendation be sent back to the screening committee. Because in the screening committee of the Secretary of the Ministry, of coal, joint secretary in the Ministry of Coal, advisor, you have a representative of railways, power, you have uh, public sector representatives, you have Ministry of Steel representatives, you have industry and environment and forest. You Others bypass too. the entire procedure and you then you don't need and, to have a then you don't need to have a screening committee. committee. Absolutely. Then Renuka Chaudhary, you don't need to have a screening committee. Why, why, why was it not sent committee? back to the screening committee? Renuka Chaudhary, answer that. Why should I answer that? This is absurd. You are supposed to be seized with a whole lot of facts. You are not aware of the many links that are there. You are not able to substantiate what you are talking. You are getting onto a national television and saying, why hasn't this happened? Why hasn't that happened? In the screening committee, I hope you'll appreciate that all political parties have their representatives there. It's not something done in isolation. No, no, the screening committee is not an all party. Right? No, no, one second, one second. I mean, one second, Renuka Chaudhary, you got it wrong. The, no, 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 screening, screening committee, committee is not an all party committee. The screening committee is the government committee. Yeah. I don't know. Subramaniam Swami is the screening committee an yes. all party committee? I didn't know that political parties run administrative decisions of the government. No, no, no. no. no, no, no. It's, a, it's a committee set up uh, by an uh, official order. And it consists of very high uh, level people in the uh, administration. Yes, and it's not an yes, ordinary committee. And the all mayor the allies. bypass shows. Yes. These, these are bureaucrats, Arnav. There were no allies. These, these are bureaucrats, not representatives. The, no, where did the allies party. come in? No, I don't know. I didn't know. Yeah. Yes. Where did the allies the come into this? The screening committee is not set up in isolation. <laughs> The screening committee is a group of bureaucrats, yes. representatives. I can tell you the composition no. of the screening yeah. committee. There is a diff Please, let's speak. Yes. No, one, one minute. One, one minute. Are you, are you saying, are you saying, yeah, Renuka Chaudhary, that the screening committee is an all-party committee? I, from my limited understanding, it certainly no, is not. not. No, I don't no, think it's the, not. It's not. I didn't then, mean it in that way. Well, then you just got it wrong there. I, the screen, then, then in that case, yeah, the issue yeah. becomes very pertinent, right? And you're saying that I don't have the facts is not correct. All I'm saying is there are certain specific details we have accessed about the screening committee decisions. And what tomorrow, TSR Subramaniam, if the court asks, if the Supreme Court asks tomorrow, that Mr. CBI lawyer, please tell me who is the competent authority. Exactly. Right? This is not a question then that you can say that, you know, I'm asking on news. What happens then, TSR Subramaniam? Uh, I... I think the answer has to be given. I think one point has not fully emerged here. I believe that in those four or five or six years, this was the only case where the decision or the recommendation of the screening committee was not acted upon, that it was changed. So clearly there must have been good argumentation, articulation of the reason. And it is really extraordinary that a screening committee decision is overturned. One hopes that there is a clear sequence of logic why it was overturned. Sequence of logic. But if that doesn't answer the question, who is the competent authority? Whether or not the court is impressed by Adam, the sequence may, of logic is not. No, no. Who is the competent Adam. authority? It is the minister. It's the minister. And who is the minister? Mr. Jaiswal, Mr. Dasari Narayan Rao. Who can it be the minister? Whoever was minister at that time. What's it? Subramaniam Swami minister says, minister how can it be the minister? Subramaniam Swami, why are you disagreeing with TSR Subramaniam on that? Huh? No, no. Yeah, yeah. Was what does it time, mean? There is, the no yes. there is no phraseology. Yes. No phraseology which includes the minister as a competent authority. Yes. But past, it is only but the, past in, at the level of the every, bureaucracy. Every one, every one of the past 200 allocations have been signed signed off by the minister. No, we have we have we have Mr. Parak yeah, saying to a newspaper. Signed. No, no, one second. Mr. We, Rao signed. Should we go a little deeper? We have Mr. Parak saying Renuka Chaudhary to a newspaper and I quote, Accordingly, I did put together a proposal to the Prime Minister, who was then our minister, that we could accommodate Hindalko also into this. And he refers to the joint venture. 
As for Neveli, because it is a government company which can be given coal block outside the captive route because government companies can be given any coal block which is not even earmarked for captive use. So he talks about the proposal to the Prime Minister. So who's the competent authority? Well, that doesn't matter. You How? are questioning the right to take the decision. No, no, no. I'm asking who is the competent authority. I have a simple question. No, no, no. No, no. One second. One second. Renuka Chaudhary, please, let's be clear. I am not asking the right to take the decision. I am saying that the Central Bureau of Investigation says it's the wrong decision. I'm not saying it. The CBI is saying it's a wrong decision. And the CBI says X number of people, Parek, Kumaramangalam, Birla, party to the decision and a competent authority. Now, who is that competent authority? If it's not the Prime Minister, not the Ministry of Coal, then who, the, who on earth is it? that you should ask the CBI who they deem as competent authority. How can I answer so, for the CBI? No, no, so I've you, been saying this. So you agree? Why are you asking me if the CBI has said this, that there is a competent authority? No, they have said it. They refer thrice in the CBI FIR. In the FIR, they refer to it thrice. I would not. Mrs. Mrs. That Chaudhary they can, mention can it answer times, it. It makes no difference. Yeah, well, Gaurav Bhatia no, is coming Mrs. back. Gaurav Bhatia is representing the government on this program. And therefore, Mrs. Chaudhary should answer. I am not representing CBI on this program. <laughs> that is the clear distinction that See, you need to be seized with. All right? Yeah, but we so are I'm talking about the decision that. taken and by the government. We are not asking you about the investigation or the FIRs that are being registered by the CBI. No, Your no, government took a decision. What, no, are you not, not here to defend that not decision? Not at all. No, that is not the issue. The issue here is that Arnav Goswami... You are not defending the decision. That the CBI has mentioned three times competent authority and who is that? And I am replying precisely to that point. No, I am... See, Miss, Miss Renuka Chaudhary, there are a lot of people who would believe the competent okay, authority... Uh, Mr. Competent... Chaudhary, I had one question for you. Yeah, go ahead. What, we have two one minutes on the debate. Is, Final question coming back from Samajwadi Party. Interesting. Reversal. I see the and cracks. The I see the cracks in the UPA to tonight. The screening committee. Yes. Repeat your question. <laughs> what? Yeah, why, why was the representation not referred to the screening committee to look into the fresh facts or the reasoning given in the representation? It should have been referred. And why this preferential treatment for a group? And then another question is that, uh, though I know that you cannot answer it, but then why Mr. Kumar Manglam Birla is being, you know, questioned and he's being named in the FIR and not the uh, political boss of that department? Because ultimately, if, the, uh, if there is a criminal conspiracy angle or there is connivance, then only can you hold a private player guilty. Otherwise, it was the government who took this decision. And they are responsible for it. If they have showed any favoritism or they have tailor-made the policy to the benefit of a private player. So ultimately, the buck stops at the coal ministry. In this case, it was with the prime minister. You know, I, I'm, I'm so amazed. At, it, this is such a naive, childish way of looking at governance. And uh, such a black and white interpretation of what is convenient to all of you. And you're talking like this, where you actually want to vitiate an atmosphere and, and make allegations and accusations which you're not able to substantiate at this point. And indulge in speculation when the court and the CBI are dealing with these issues. I am but really the CBI concerned. has said competent okay, authority. The supposedly the CBI has said competent authority. Are putting out this message. The word yes, competent authority has been used by the CBI the three times in the FIR. We really yeah, want to know so who the competent authority. Ask the and, CBI. And maybe under pressure, Rana, you don't show. know the CBI so has never given ask. a free hand to operate. I have just one question. I have one question. Now, now this is amazing. You people can't make up your mind whether the CBI works autonomously or it's not given a free you know hand. The, the if it wasn't given a free hand, this situation wouldn't have come at it all. Has, it has never Since worked this, autonomously. We are in this situation. It has never you worked have to autonomously. Make up your mind. No, no, once it has I, always been yeah, a yeah, political what, what, tool in the hand. No, of the Renuka Chaudhary, what are you saying? If it wasn't given a free you hand, know, it wouldn't happen. Are, are you so saying. Nice. Are you saying that in other cases it is not given a free hand, so things like this don't happen? And in this case, it got a free hand, it went rogue, so this happened. 
We said, oh, your own assumptions feel free. I have one I'm question. I'm not obliged to answer on this speculation. Been... I, I, have, I, have, I have just one question before and I wrap this up. how do you up. speak with so much authority? Miss Chaudhary, the CBI this has always been X, Y, and Z. Miss Miss Risa, Miss Miss Chaudhary, amazing, I have amazing. I have. Uh, you make such sweeping statements. I was I, it not evident when I, an affidavit uh, was filed before the Supreme Court, which was vetted at the Law Minister's office. Was it not clear I, then? Now you know. I wish it was an admission by the director of the CBI that what, he had shared wait, the second. content of the affidavits what, with second. the Law Minister. What, what did the What did the director of CBI say at that point? Why don't you read out the whole thing? You can't do selective he had amnesia he had, and choose he had things out of context and blow it up. No, I am telling you no, that it was no, vetted. He never said that. It was vetted by the then that. law minister. He, then they are supposed to act independently. This. But that is uh, hello. Till you change the law and policy, who do you want okay. to report to? Now, you? one second. One, one second, uh, can I please just make one point tonight? We did not invent the word competent authority. The Central Bureau of Investigation thrice refers to this competent authority. <laughs> and despite anyone's displeasure, we continue to ask, who is this competent authority? If this competent authority is not the Ministry of Minister of Coal, the Minister of State for Coal, can the Coal Secretary be the competent authority? Or is it someone else? This word competent authority was not invented by Times Now. It was invented, if any, in this context by Mr. Ranjit Sinha. So Mr. Ranjit Sinha either doesn't know who the competent authority is or will wait till the 29th when the Supreme Court might ask him who is the competent authority. We'll wait for that. We'll track the story. The facts are with us. And we'll continue our investigation. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me on debate number one. I'm on the news beginning article. to sound like Kon Banega Karod Pati. Uh, well, Miss, Miss, you, you know, Miss, Miss, Miss. Competent authority. Thank you. And the four Miss, options. Miss Chaudhary, uh, Miss Chaudhary, I give you, I give you, I'll give you four options. A lot of, a lot of people you, have one second, one second, one second, one second. I have just one, one question. <laughs> Miss Chaudhary. A lot of people have become Karod Pati. Miss Chaudhary, would you like to phone a friend <laughs> to find out who the competent authority is? <laughs> Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for joining me on News Our Debate 1 tonight. Thank you.